Welcome to Pario Magazine, where I chat with individuals who have a desire to create. Today, I am joined by a developer of the new game, Mars Base, which is now available on PC and soon to be on Nintendo Switch. Welcome to Pario Magazine, Kung Lee. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. So we're here today to chat about your journey into the world of game development. Before we dive into that, though, do you want to give our audience a brief introduction as to who Kung is away from the game and game development? Um, so I was raised in Brisbane, Australia. Um, I've been into gaming since I was a kid. I think most kids are pretty much into games nowadays as well. Um, I think game development, I took interest in it in high school when I started playing uh, StarCraft and then just building, like they had a little a map editor where you could build levels. Um, I think my interest came from there. And then in university, I studied uh, software engineering and which is like, uh, just did a lot of programming. Surprisingly, I ended up doing 3D graphics <laughs> as a job in the game industry. Yep. So that was my first job in the game industry. Oh, actually, sorry. I started in um, game QA first. Then I went to do 3D art. Um, from there, I took a break because the, comp the, the company didn't do too well. So um, I changed career for a while. So I was just currently doing web development. And game development's kind of been kind of interest to me since then. Um, so I just, yeah, that's how I ended up started doing my own indie games on the, on the side part-time. Okay. So you said you've been a, a fan of gaming since childhood. When did you yeah. first discover the passion and what were those early favorite games? Um, I think my mom, she just brought us a, a, a Sega Mega Drive at the time and then um yeah i think just from there we started playing a lot of games i think a lot of favorite childhood memories probably alex the kid uh sonic the hedgehog okay um street fighter as well i really did enjoy like mario and stuff but i never had a nintendo but whereas my friends had it so we just went to their place to play so yeah. okay and how have those sort of favorite games evolved now over the years? Good question. Um, I've, I guess a lot of the games nowadays are, you know, generally 3D, 3D games, um, currently into Elden Ring, mm -hmm. playing that a lot. Um, I was never really into those kind of souls like games because they're quite difficult, but yeah, Elden Ring was kind of, um, made it easy to get into. So. That's been good. Okay. I don't play too many games nowadays, actually, because I have two kids to look after as well. Okay. And then yep. I have the game level development stuff to work on. Yep. Busy all the time now. Yeah. If I get a chance, I'll just play those um, games for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, Hades, actually. Hades is one that I jump into every now and then on the Switch. Yep. And you mentioned sort of the way you sort of found your way going down this development path was through just map editor in StarCraft, how did you then think, okay, maybe this is something I could pursue as a career and what steps did you then have to take to get that? Um, so before I did uh, software engineering uni, I, I took up, I found some books, um, brought some books in the bookstore, like programming ones. And that's, I guess that's where it started from there, where I just started uh, self-taught, I guess, um, programming. At, the, at that time, it was still quite difficult to get into gaming because it's not as easily accessible nowadays uh, for game development because nowadays there's a lot of um, engines freely available. So it is a lot easier nowadays than 20 years ago. Do you think um, that is a benefit yeah. that it is much more accessible now? Like we're getting a lot more creativity and different styles of games? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it gives people more freedom to, you know, create the actual game and the content. And not to have to worry about, you know, the worry about the game engine itself. That it gives people a chance to be more creative. Um, I guess that being said, it does saturate the market a little bit as well. So I guess to really stand out, you got to do something a little bit different. Yep. <clears throat> and for you, that doing something a little bit different was founding your own game studio, 
KF Games in Brisbane or KZ Games in yep. Brisbane. How did you go down that path and take those steps? Um, I I always wanted to do, I guess, um, my own games. Uh, just just being able to develop it myself gives me the freedom to you know kind of do what I want in the game. Um, I think that's probably the main reason why I went kind of just like uh, indie, just to give me the ability to be creative, um, to see how I, to make it the game how I see. Okay. Yep. And is there a strong game development community in Brisbane and around Australia that you can sort of bounce ideas off and collaborate with if you wanted to go that route as well? Um, I haven't been able to go to many of the uh, any of the actual um game. Game Expo is around Brisbane or even in Australia, but there's definitely a lot of um, indie developers in Brisbane and Melbourne that I know of. Um, they are creating some quite popular games recently as well. Um, I think Unpacking is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, Cult of the Lamb. Yep. I believe that was from Melbourne. Yeah. Has it been good to have sort of those fellow Australian developers to bounce ideas off and just, I guess, go through the struggles and share yeah. share your stories yeah definitely um it, it, it gives you confidence as well like you know that we australians can make games as good as the rest of the world um and then shifting over to the latest release mars base can yeah. you tell us a little bit about the game and where the inspirations for it came from um so mars base is a lot of people see it when they first see it, they say, oh, it's Saju Valley but on Mars. Um, and which is correct, because that's one of the games that inspired me to make this as well. Um, Saju Valley, I had to give props to um, Harvest Moon, which is way back on the Super Nintendo. Um, and another game called Little Wood, which is, has similar gameplay mechanics to have. Up. Those are the, pretty much the games that kind of inspire this. Um, I guess from a... The, from the lore, it's kind of like I really enjoyed The Martian, the movie. Yep, that's what that was my first thought. As well. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm also really into like space, just space in general. So SpaceX follow follow um, Elon Musk and his tweets about you know building Starbase, everything on Mars. So that kind of gave me the idea of hey, we I can do this something something co something cool on Mars, but you know something that's familiar as well, so people are familiar playing those farm sims, base builders. And how long have you been working on this game and what have been some of the the difficulties and biggest challenges that you've had to overcome during development? Um, so I started development probably uh, early la last year. Okay, so um, it's come around quite quick. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So it, it's quite a small game. It's not like a, a massive game at the moment, but I plan to expand on it. Um, yeah, I can't had the idea of the game end of last year, started doing a little, little prototype, um, went to Kickstarter just to see if there's any interest in the game and that ended, ended up doing okay. So, um, full development only started really July last year until now. Um, but even then it's part-time because I actually have a full-time day job. So it's like, I do it at nighttime every hour, every hour here, here and there. Okay. So yeah, it's a true passion project, this one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like a labor of love. And you mentioned the Kickstarter being really successful. It gained 129% of what your initial target goal was. Uh, did that come as a shock to you that it, it did so well? It did, yeah. Um, I, like, the main reason that I wanted to do was obviously see if there's interest in the game like this. And it was good because I guess people were after more more games that are similar to, you know, Stardew Valley, but a little bit different. Um, I guess a lot of people are interested in space as well. So space is definitely a, was good. And given it was KZ Games debut, was that, did you sort of go into this Kickstarter thinking, we'll see how this goes. It, it, it might not, not, might not be successful, but if it is, then we're off to the races with this studio. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so I haven't like, you know, quit my day job yet but you know it gives me that the chance or the career 
path chance to, to do it go that way if I wanted to. And if it does, okay, yeah. And given that it did exceed your goals and expectations, did that then place a little bit more pressure on you as the creator and on the game itself? Oh yeah, definitely. It's like, after I was finished, I was like, oh, okay, now I really have to finish the game. So yeah, there was a lot of um, sleepless nights, just, you know, trying to get it done and a bit stressful at times actually, but it was it should be worth it. And now that the game is out in the wild on the PC, how have the early responses been and how proud are you of the final product? Uh, the response has been relatively good. Um, there's a few negative reviews, which I expect because, you know, it, I can't um, please everybody, but it's it's a good start. I do want to see it uh, grow a bit more, um, but I, I guess it depends on the community because I want to build the game, you know, around the community as well. So if whatever they want, however they want to see it go, um, that's the path I want to go take it. Okay. And then looking ahead, what else is on the horizon for you and KZ Games? Is it simply focusing on expanding out Mars base or do you have other ideas floating around in the back of your mind? Um, I guess my top priority right now would be expanding Mars base. Um, as I said, it was going to be driven by the community feedback as well. Um, I do have a few ideas for the next project, but it's kind of, I'm just playing around with the ideas at the moment, so nothing in concrete yet. But I definitely do when I move on, uh, when I get the chance as well, just to play around with, with different genres. Okay. And is there sort of a hope that perhaps we could go down like a, a Minecraft path with community creation and just this game exploding and becoming huge? Uh, yeah, like there has been a few um, requests from people asking about mod support. So I think pe people are really interested in doing their own thing, building out, you know, their own kind of theme around the game. Um, I, guess which is people, good. I guess people could go and make different planets and expand it out that way and do different things. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like, uh, I would, I would like to see it happen too. Like, I guess it would depend on the community if everyone wants it or not. Um, but it'd be interesting to see what people, other people build as well around it. And then is there a dream project that you would like to work on, say, say Mars base explodes and you just have an unlimited amount of money, what would you <laughs> then go and create? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, there's a few genres I would, would have mind like going to in the future. Um, one of them is kind of like a hack and slash, kind of like a, a RPG like Diablo. Yep. Um, but obviously a, a different different theme around that. Um, that would be one project I would like to do in the future. If, you know, like you're saying, if budget doesn't, there's no budget constraints. Okay, awesome. And then finally, where is the best place for people to support you and track this creative journey moving forward? Um, I have a Twitter account. It's, um, so it's K, KZ or KZ Games on Twitter. Um, also, just search up Mars Base on Steam and yeah, check us out, wishlist us and play the game if you get a chance. Alrighty, fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me and good luck with the release and hopefully we have the next Minecraft on our hands. <laughs> Thanks, Eve, Jamie.